Levitation can be achieved in many strange ways, and this video is going to showcase some really amazing and recent discoveries to the field. So stay tuned and let's begin at number 5. At number 5, Laser Levitation. This particular form of levitation can hold tiny nano diamonds in a vacuum. Many 100 nanometer diamonds are sprayed into the chamber and then eventually one floats towards the laser's focal point. Once the diamond is in this focal point, there is a feedback signal which is based on the position and it holds the velocity of the nano diamond, which actively damps its motion. So technically this is not the most efficient way of levitation since you are spraying numerous nano diamonds into a vacuum, with the random chance of one being levitated. But the whole point of this system is to show that levitating diamonds can be used to measure extremely tiny forces and even act as nano oscillators. So ultimately they can spawn a new set of measuring tools which were never available before. At number 4, Heat Flow Levitation. Researchers at the University of Chicago unveiled a really cool and new levitation technique. Unlike other forms of levitation, heat flow actually works virtually on anything. The machine is really simple and it's basically made of two different plates with a vacuum in between. One plate is set at a very cold temperature at a minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and the other plate is set at room temperature, which creates a heat flow between the two plates. And basically, this can lift any type of particle between them. It sounds simple enough, but accuracy and position of the plates are key to this form of levitation. So ultimately, will this build us new hover cars and things like that? Well, probably not, but it can lead to further studies on microgravity effects without actually going to space, which is really cool. At number three, acoustic levitation. Once again, this method can work on almost anything, including liquids. It works by using opposing beams of sound waves which create standing waves. These standing waves can then levitate an object in mid-air. So a neat fact about this method is that the waves are typically ultrasonic. So you don't hear them because they are above the human hearing range. One of the most impressive displays of acoustic levitation was actually done on a large 2-inch polystyrene ball. It was over 3 times larger than the acoustic wavelength, so it was a great stride forward in this field. Another cool project, which I'm sure most of you have heard about, is the 3D printed tractor beam. It was also the first prototype of the gravity gun, and it can actually levitate small objects. So acoustic levitation has great potential, and I'm sure we'll see more incredible things in the future. We move on to number 2 and look at electromagnetic suspension. This type of levitation works by altering the current and strength of the magnetic fields produced by the electromagnets. So most of those gimmicky floating gadgets that you see all the time use this type of method, and even the maglev trains utilize electromagnetic suspension. The levitating object is dependent on its weight and power of the magnetic fields. And in most cases a microcontroller is used to control the height of the levitating object. Another neat way to achieve electromagnetic levitation is to make an array and constantly change the magnet's positions themselves. This principle involves moving a magnet which induces a current in a conductor, thereby creating a magnetic field. With the right geometry, induced fields will repel each other and you have magnetic levitation. The Hendel hoverboard is a really good example of this. It uses rotating magnets at a very high speed which will impose a current and then create a magnetic field which allows the board to hover. But the one major drawback to this system is that it only works on conductive surfaces. So we finally reached number one, and it's actually my favorite form of levitation because anybody can actually try this out, it's not that complicated. And that is diamagnetic levitation. Diamagnets include many types of organic materials and even metals, so this type of levitation works on a lot of different things. Diamagnetism is a form of levitation when a diamagnetic material comes close to a magnetic material. The electrons in the diet magnet rearrange their orbit, creating small currents which oppose the external magnetic field. But most importantly and the neatest thing is that there's a number of ways to achieve levitation through diet magnetism. One method involves a very powerful electromagnet enclosed around a diamatic material. The infamous floating frog experiment is a good showcase of this method, since the frog is made mostly of water which is diamagnetic and floats freely in midair. It can actually theoretically work on a human being, but I would not volunteer to do this experiment. The second method is to simply place a strong diamagnetic material over a strong magnet. Pyrolithic graphite works really well for this type of method. And this is definitely the best method to try out if you are going to perform diamagnetic levitation. The third method involves a magnet suspended between two diamagnetic materials with a stabilizing magnet. Once you get the fields just right, the magnet will float there for a very long time in midair. The final method in which I'll present is in my opinion the holy grail of diamagnetism, and that is the great state of superconductivity. Superconductivity is simply the state of zero electroresistance, 
and the expulsion of magnetic flux fields in certain materials. Only superconductors can exhibit this behavior. And most have to be cooled to around 77 Kelvin. And that's why you typically see a superconductor in very cold liquid nitrogen. Cool projects which showcase this levitation include Mobius strips and the infamous levitation board by Lexus. And unlike magnets, superconductivity will work regardless if it's upside down or sideways because the superconductor is locked to its position. The ultimate challenge is to discover a superconductor which actually works at room temperature, and this will spawn a new evolution in technology. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you actually made it to the end, and subscribe to my channel.